Welcome back to Arise Entertainment 360. Now, rock and roll, female and black are three things you typically don't hear in the same <laughs> sentence. But singer-songwriter Kimberly Nicole is a witness that now you can. Yeah. Kimberly, welcome to Arise 360. Uh, hey, girl. Hey, Hello. Hey, Bobo. <laughs> now, we have to start mm. with your stellar performance uh -huh. at Broadway's Rock Topia. Yes. Yes. I mean, you have performed to critical acclaim, the New York Post, everyone <laughs> is writing about you. Your performance uh -huh. is stellar. Thank what is you. it like being part of such an amazing production? I mean, it's a new it's a new thing for me because it's my first time being on Broadway. The schedule is very new and different. You know, mm -hmm. you have to pull up a bit more. <laughs> but it's been it's definitely a dream come true. I'm a little girl in Seattle. I dreamt of being on Broadway, and what better way to be on Broadway than doing Music I love and that's near and dear to me. So, wow, it's fabulous. It's oh, yeah, it is, fabulous. girl. Right. Everybody agrees with you. <laughs> yes, the reviews are coming in with rave reviews from the New York Times and uh -huh. so many other publications. But tell us a little bit more about what the show is. I mean, it's just a mashup of you know classical music meets rock and roll. It's basically if you think about like Beethoven and Mozart, they were the rock stars of their era, and if they were brought together with Jimi Hendrix and Robert Plant and Freddie Mercury, they would all have this big party that we're presenting on stage. So that's what Rocktopia is. Now, yes, cool. each evening, and the matinees, of course, yes. you're backed <laughs> by a full orchestra. Mm -hmm. yes. I mean, I've seen it, but what other surprises can the audience expect with the rock bands that um, you have behind you? I mean, I just think that just the intertwining of these two different genres that people think are separate, them being together is a just a surprise in itself. Yeah. And then all these different type of performers, all of us are, are completely different type of vocalists and we're all on one stage. So it's always some some nice little surprises every evening. So yeah. it's a great experience. Uh, any yeah. surprises that are your favorite? Like you like to surprise people, hit a note um, and everybody's like, oh my God. I like to surprise folks with my back bend. You know, oh, I do a little right back bend and I hold a note. Uh -oh. You know, give them the light little shoes. Wait, are you able to just hit, hit it like randomly, like right now? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Too early. It's like, I know, it's like early in the day. I need to warm up. Like. I, need, I need to warm up. <laughs> she would have an oh, easy oh, show to go to after bend. this. <laughs> Oh, now. Oh, preserve so you're, it, you're not preserve paying it. her Broadway Broadway Pre rates? Fair so enough. She cannot break Cut the chat. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. 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 So now, we, you spoke about the different types of musical genres that each yeah. of the artists have whilst on stage, but you yourself mm -hmm. sing with an eclectic range of yeah. musical genres. Yeah. Talk to me about what types and why you've chosen. I mean, well, I'm a, a rock and roll singer, and I just, I think it's a part of my DNA. Rock and roll was birthed out of the black American experience, yes. the godmother of rock and roll. Her name is Sister Rosetta Tharp. She's been finally inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this yeah. year. Her name is Simone. Anyway, so, um, you know, it's just, I think it's rock music is my birthright. It's something that makes me feel free. It's where I can be my my most authentic self. And it's, you know, it's a genre that's very empowering and near and dear to my heart. So yeah. I enjoy doing it. I enjoy squalling and backbending and <laughs> right, right. doing what my people created. <laughs> Well, as you're enjoying <laughs> it, how do you like the fact that you are literally changing the perception mm. of what rock music yeah. looks like? I just I just feel like that, um, you know, I'm a keeper of the flame, that I have to remind and, and educate people on what, you know, what the foundation of this music is. And, you know, I'm just continuing something that has been kind of unsung and dug and, and buried or whatever, and I'm just bringing it back to life with many other um, amazing black women that do rock music, too. I'm not the only one. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Now, speaking of these amazing black musicians, yes. you shared the stage with some legends in their own right, yeah. from Allo Black to uh -huh. Janelle Monáe to John Bon Jovi. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a big deal. I mean, don't freak out And John Bon Jovi <laughs> gave me a kiss on the lips after we performed. Whoa. Whoa. I said, well, hello. Don't tell more about that. <laughs> Yes, we need the like, scoop oh, on that story. Yeah. Wait, 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 did you just freeze? What happened? Did you I, I mean, back? he Look. was coming in and I went back in. What are you supposed <laughs> to do? What am I supposed to go, no, no. I'm a grown woman. No. <laughs> You're like, yep. I, I was like, all right, we'll, we'll come through. <laughs> come on, lips. It's fine. <laughs> oh my it's goodness. Fine. Okay, so aside from the kiss from John Bon Jovi, yeah. <laughs> which was your favorite person to perform with and why? I mean, Slash of Guns N' Roses. Wow. That's I mean, a good one. he has been my. <laughs> so performing with him was definitely a dream come true, and I kind of put it out in the atmosphere, and he. And it just definitely happened, and even to, to, till to this day, you know, I'm able to 
text him or call him for advice when need be. So he's oh, a good guy wow. and that's, one of the best. That's awesome. Now, you mentioned Bon Jovi, of course, kissing mm -hmm. on the lips. <laughs> and speaking of him as an inductee into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame mm -hmm. this year, actually this month, mm -hmm. two women who you mentioned earlier yeah. will finally be inducted. Nina Simone finally. and Finally! This right. is such a long yeah. time coming. I know. Do you think it's finally that like things are changing for women, especially, you know, women of color being inducted and, and you know, just for music in general? I mean, I don't know. I think kind of the Black Panther Wakanda era has has risen and things are, people are putting a little bit more focus on to black women in music or whatever. But, you know, I mean, there's no better time than now. And then mm -hmm. things always come full circle. They happen when they should. When Rock and Roll Hall of Fame was created, Rosetta Tharp should have been the first one inducted. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Well, but, well. I mean, but I'm just, I'm happy that they're, they're finally being, um, you know, honored. You know, Nina Simone is just... A force. She's just a powerful force. She's done some incredibly genius work that people attested to her being. She was crazy. No, she wasn't. Mm. She was really a genius. She was a and so was a visionary, yeah. you know, about her people and advocates. So she's a big inspiration of mine and Rosetta. So I'm just happy that two women that are just like my... They're my, they're my icons. They're my dear loves. They're yeah. my mothers to me. Um, are being inducted and recognized. So it would be cute if I was singing on the uh, <laughs> right. the show, but you know I ain't gonna sing on the Come on, get it right. <laughs> now, right. You mentioned that uh, rock and roll's roots are in the black culture, the yeah. African American experience. Why do you think it's taken so long for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame to induct these black ladies? I just, I mean, I just think it's you know it's just politics. I think you think about the just the history of music, and then at one point when it was rhythm and blues, and then there was race records, and then they separated rhythm and blues and rock and roll to, to just basically just do a, a race divide. So we just, mm. it started early on doing, think about the civil rights era and then post-emancipation, just the separation of music by color. So that's how it happened back mm. then during Jim Crow and all this. And I mean, now it's kind of, they're trying to clear it up a little bit. Mm. They're trying to fix it up now and, you know, and they inducted two women that are should have been there. But do you think it's a case of too little, too late? No, uh, you kind of, you kind of like, okay, <laughs> we'll take it. Like, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. you know, okay. <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, yeah. you know, what do you do? Yeah, yeah. well, at least no. it's happening, and times it are is. definitely changing. Yeah. And we want to talk a little bit about the changes you've gone through through your career and oh, your life. Yeah. But we're going to take a break first and then come back and do that, all right? So all don't right. go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to Arise Entertainment 360. Now, we are still joined by the talented Broadway star, Kimberly Nicole. Yes. And we're talking about your career. Mm -hmm. The transgression from beginning to middle to the sweet... <laughs> well, I won't say the end, but where no. you are right now. Right, please just say the end. I'm just, I'm just getting just started. Getting started. <laughs> now, you were actually a contestant on season eight's The Voice. Yeah. How did that help shape your career? I mean, it's definitely opened doors for me. I think it really is probably the reason that I ended up on Broadway, because it exposed me to a larger demographic of mainstream people. And um, I got on a few more people's radars, and, you know, then I got this opportunity with Rocktopia a few years ago. We filmed in Budapest, and then it um, oh, wow. aired on PBS, a special. Then we toured last year, and then now we're on Broadway. So they were exposed to me from The Voice, the producers of the show. So The Voice has definitely opened up the floodgates and, you know, I'm grateful. Yeah, and yeah. now the show's still going on. It's in its 14th season. Mm -hmm. Have you been watching? What do you think? No, I don't <laughs> watch. <laughs> You were I'm not going to lie. Done. I don't like... I, you're I, usually too busy you're on the stage. When yeah, you know, and I, and I live in London now. So, mm. you know, it's kind of... It's, I don't have a TV. Well, I kind of have TV, but I just hook it up to my laptop and watch Netflix. Right. But, you know, I just really don't keep up with the scene competitions anymore. Yeah, I, I don't, you know. Okay. So but you, I do watch clips sometimes of different people. Yeah. Mm. And like, you mentioned living in London. What is a girl from Seattle doing in London? I mean, isn't it the trajectory of rock people well, from Seattle? Yeah. Jimi Hendrix, oh, yes, hit, yeah. hit, hit. I mean, I'm not going to die over there, but I mean, I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> no shade, Jimmy. Love you. Um, I mean, I just, I've always wanted to live in London. And at some point in my, my journey, I was preparing to leave New York. This was 2016. I was like, I'm going to go to L.A. I'm just going to move to L.A. and see what happens in L.A. And then an opportunity presented itself for me to go and host the show, the box show in London in Soho. Ah, and I said, here yes, we go. There's my it. ticket. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm there now. I, I, London, the slow burn is growing on me. But, you know, I live in Finsbury Park. I have a cute flat. 
Okay. It's, you know, I'm feeling that it's where I should be right now on my journey, yeah. so. Mm. Now, you get any inspiration for your music while you're there? You I, absolutely. I feel like I've been, um, I'm going into the studio while I'm here still in New York with my band, so I'm in New York. I mean, London is definitely inspiring me. Like, newness inspires creativity. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a new place. Right. I'm very far from my family and friends, so that, you know, stimulates a different type of, um, creativity in me, so. Yeah. I have some new stuff okay. in the bag oh. happening. Mm -hmm. Okay, and speaking about being far away from your friends, your mm -hmm. family actually just landed in America to watch the opening yeah. night of Octopia. Yes, they did. My parents came in town, which I'm grateful for. My dad came from Seattle. My mom is back in Louisiana now, but it was, they're very proud, and I was like, you know, all the money you've spent on me all these years. <laughs> it's paid off. It's paying off. Uh, it might not be paying off monetarily but right now, it's but you see the fruits of your labor. Yes, there yes. you go. It's coming, there it's you go. Your name is in lights and yes. on the label. They are very, they're they're proud. And they even, outside of Rocktopia, I did a um, performance at Joe's Pub for Nona Hendrix Rock Solid Women's um, Festival. So they saw me even doing my own original music Aww. with the band. So That's awesome. My parents, and, and I sang a song with my mother at that show. Yes, because so. your mother's, mother's a, singer a singer as well. She's a singer too. So, so would you say that's where you get all your musical talent yeah, from? Yeah, I think so. I, and I get a lot of my wit and my <laughs> banter and my uh -huh. chatting. <laughs> Be from my daddy's side of the family. Ah. Yeah, my mom's side is all musical people. Well, have you ever performed with your mother before? I have. So what was it like this time? Was it different well, it now was... that you're a different person now? Yeah, yeah I'm, a, I'm a woman. I'm a grown yes, woman. Exactly. I'm a grown woman. <laughs> amen. Um, not amen. Yeah, I like that. I like it. We at church. It's oh, post-Easter <laughs> service. <laughs> well, that's what your voice comes across. It takes me to church. It does. So I'm voice. from the church. Right. You know it. See? But my mama, I mean... She, it was spontaneous because I was thinking, I was like, oh my God, my mom's here. I should sing this song with her. It's one of my original songs I really love. So it was good to be on stage with her and she was smiling and because she looked a bit nervous, but you know, I always make her proud. So mm. now your show stopping performances, we have to talk about that because it's what the New York Times and everybody else is <laughs> raving about. But it also landed you on the Billboard 100 charts. Yes, from the what? voice. That was it was cute. Yeah, I mean, Amazing. she said it was cute. It was, it was <laughs> cute. You know, it was major because you don't think. I mean, when you're just on the ride, you're on it, and you don't think about the accolades. Yeah. And then when they happen, you're like. Oh, uh, I'm I'm doing okay. I'm doing what I'm okay. supposed to do. You're you know? being celebrated by the yeah. most revered publications in the yeah. world. Yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. Cool. I'm very grateful. I mean, I think of the years of hard work, and I'm like, it's about time. I don't know. <laughs> no shade. No, no. But when you put in the hard work, and it's nice to see it pay off. Yeah, yeah. and I'm like, yeah, you know, it feels good to be mm -hmm. recognized. Yeah. yeah. And so now will you be doing, you say you're working on some music, you're mm -hmm. working on other things. How soon do we can expect and actually buy? We want to support your music. Yes. Well, my plan is um, end of summer, early fall, releasing a project called The West Coast Seattle Girl. Nice. So it should be, it's a, a cute little project that I'm very excited about. Cute is my favorite. Right, I know. <laughs> are we looking I'm, at all rock? Or we... It's a totally rock and roll. Yeah. What you mean? I'm just making sure. I'm just, you, you think I'm going to be up there singing some Negro real. spiritual <laughs> suit? I was hoping that church would be on there. You know? no, no, no. Rock and roll is a church, so I'll wow. be giving you a little bit of laugh. No. But, um... <laughs> That's James Brown, but you know, right, same right, thing. Right. Start church but too. yeah, you start okay, right. You know, you know. But it's it's a project I'm very proud of, and I'm gonna do a few dates with my band after immediately following Broadway, just kind of leading up to it, and then hopefully coming back to the States doing some stuff in the fall. Amazing. And before yeah. we let you go, we have to talk about your fashion. Yes. <laughs> Me. Okay. Because you have bullets around your head, you've got <laughs> pearls dripping from your ears, and you look like the most beautiful melanated ballerina I've seen in my life with Doc Martens. Yes, <laughs> you want to know it. <laughs> yes. oh, I am obsessed with this. This is all Andrea London. Tally is too. Uh, London, London. you got the London wow. This is London. London. <laughs> Yeah. Any plans yeah. to come out with a fashion line or anything in the future? I don't know. I, wherever the wind blows. Well, you've been in Vogue. <laughs> Why not? I have. Yes, yes, I have. So people are loving your fashion. Why not? I, I mean, it's a thought. I've okay. thought about it. Listen, if you okay. came out with a line, I would, you would I would not it. have any money left. You because would. I'd be in the shop <laughs> all the time. Okay? Thank you, boo. Supporting my own so she can take me out for food. Right. <laughs> right. Girl, I bought that outfit last night. You got What's drinks tonight? Right. <laughs> exactly. Kim Nicole.
Nicole. Oh, it has oh, been an yes. absolute joy. We cannot Thank wait to guys. continue supporting you, Rooktopia, and yes. everywhere else that you'll be performing. Thank you, guys. Thank work. you for having me. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And Arise 360 will be right back.